Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding 8.33 kHz Channel Spacing. In this short presentation, we'll explain the purpose, use, and phraseology of 8.33 kHz channels in VHF aeronautical communications. Let's start with an overview of VHF aeronautical or airband communications. As you may already know, civilian aeronautical communications use analog AM in the frequency range of approximately 118 to 137 megahertz. In the early days of aviation, these channels were 200 kilohertz wide. But over the years, the bandwidth of these channels has been progressively reduced, first to 100 kilohertz, then 50 kilohertz, and then to the modern 25 kilohertz channel width. At a width of 25 kilohertz, this band can support up to 760 channels. The rapid increase of air traffic has, however, increased the need for even more frequencies or channels within this aeronautical band. And in some parts of the world, specifically Europe, this issue has been addressed by further reducing the channel width, in this case from 25 kilohertz to 8.33 kilohertz. By taking a traditional 25 kilohertz channel, and dividing its bandwidth into three 8.33 kHz channels, the available channel count is effectively tripled. Although this requires changes in both transmitting and receiving equipment, many modern aeronautical radios can switch between 25 kHz and 8.33 kHz, either manually or automatically based on the selected channel. As mentioned on the previous slide, this 8.33 kHz channel spacing is primarily used in Europe, it was first made mandatory at higher altitudes or flight levels, but this mandate was gradually expanded all the way down to the ground, and now applies to aircraft flying at any altitude within European airspace. But even within Europe, there are still some exceptions to this 8.33 kHz mandate. That is, there are still some channels which retain the traditional 25 kHz channel width. These exempt channels include the emergency frequency of 121.5 MHz, as well as the auxiliary search and rescue frequency of 123.1 MHz. The other exceptions concern channels that carry data rather than voice. For example, the VHF data link, or VDL frequencies, retain their 25 kHz width, as do the channels used for ACARS, or the Aircraft Communications Addressing and Reporting System. Note, too, that radios which are designed or intended only to operate on these frequencies do not need to support the newer 8.33 kHz channel width. One issue with using an 8.33 kHz width is that these channels could have four digits or more following the decimal point. This is somewhat unwieldy in terms of user interfaces and phraseology. Another, perhaps more serious issue, is that we need some way to distinguish between an 8.33 kHz channel and a 25 kHz channel, which both have the same center frequency. The solution to these issues is that an 8.33 kHz frequency is really more like a channel number or a designator, even though it's spoken and displayed in a frequency-like way. Unlike 25 kHz channel frequencies, 8.33 kHz channel frequencies are not the center frequency of the channel. An 8.33 kHz frequency is created either by rounding a shoulder frequency up or down by 1.666 kHz, or by artificially adding 5 kHz to a center frequency. Let's go through this in detail using diagrams and numbers. In this example, our traditional 25 kHz channel has a center frequency of 118.2 MHz, and this channel is designated by its true transmit frequency, 118.2 MHz. Recall that three 8.33 kHz channels can fit within this same bandwidth. The center 8.33 kHz channel has the same center frequency as the 25 kHz channel, so 5 kHz is artificially added to its designation to indicate that this channel is only 8.33 kHz wide. The other two channels, sometimes called the shoulder channels, have centers that are 8.33 kHz above and 8.33 kHz below the frequency of the center channel. 
Since the precise center frequencies of these shoulder channels have an undesirably large number of decimal digits, they are designated by shorter, more easily used numbers that only have three digits following the decimal place. As discussed a few moments ago, the frequency of a 25 kHz channel is always the same as the actual transmit frequency. On the other hand, the frequency of an 8.33 kHz channel is never the same as the transmit frequency. One easy way to determine which channel spacing is being used is to divide the kilohertz or decimal portion of the frequency by 25. If the result of this division is an integer, then the frequency is a 25 kilohertz frequency. For example, the frequencies 118.000, 118.025, and 118.500 are all 25 kilohertz channels, whereas 118.005, 118.010, and 118.015 are all 8.33 kilohertz channels. ICAO, the International Civilian Aviation Organization, requires that all VHF channels be designated using six digits, although four digits can be used if the channel frequency ends in two zeros. This applies to both 8.33 kilohertz and 25 kilohertz channel spacings. ICAO also specifies the phraseology, or the way that these frequencies should be read. For example, 118.005, 118.025, and 118.01. Note that we can omit the final two zeros in this last case. ICAO also specifies that the phrase confirm 8.33 can be used to check if an aircraft supports 8.33 kHz channel widths. And this must be done before an aircraft is handed over to a sector that uses this spacing. The replies either affirm or negative 8.33. Let's end with a brief summary. The demand for additional channels in the VHF aeronautical band has been steadily increasing. And one method for increasing the number of available channels is to divide each traditional 25 kHz channel into three 8.33 kHz channels. This narrower channel width is now required in European airspace, and most modern airband radios support both channel widths. It is, however, important to remember that although 8.33 kHz frequencies look like traditional frequencies, they do not represent the exact channel transmit frequency. The reason for using these frequency-like designators is they both reduce the need for an excessive number of digits as well as allow for easy determination of channel width. This concludes our presentation, Understanding 8.33 kHz Channel Spacing. If you'd like to learn more about aeronautical communications, air traffic control radios, or test and measurement instruments for aeronautical radio testing, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at rody-schwartz.com.